Pope Francis rebukes EWTN. This happened in his recent visit to Hungary and then Slovakia. He had a private meeting in Slovakia with the Jesuits. And he jokes around and he says that uh, there are people who wanted me to die. I know there were even meetings between prelates who thought the Pope's condition was more serious than the official version. They were preparing for a conclave. Patience. Thank God I'm all right. But the really bombastic part was his words about EWTN. Now, he didn't say EWTN. You may be asking, what is EWTN? EWTN is the Eternal Word Television Network. It was founded by Mother Angelica. And it is, I think, the, well, I guess there are other Catholic networks, but it's the biggest and most well-known. It's based in America. And uh, Pope Francis says, quote, there is, for example, a large Catholic television channel that has no hesitation in continually speaking ill of the Pope. I personally deserve attacks and insults because I am a sinner, but the church does not deserve them. They are the work of the devil. He also said that there are clerics who have, quote, made nasty comments about me. Quote, I sometimes lose patience, especially when they make judgments without entering into real dialogue. I cannot do anything there. However, I go on without entering their world of ideas and fantasies. I don't want to enter into it, and that's why I prefer to preach, preach. So, there it is. Now, today I'm going to go through... Um, the three forms of gaslighting that are actually in these quotes to help you identify them because the Catholic Church, uh, within the Catholic Church, within the fallen human leadership of the Catholic Church, um, there has been gaslighting going on for at least 50 years. That the people, like Mother Angelica, um, like Raymond Arroyo, like the Papal Posse, the people who are actually taking out a flashlight and putting light on the problem that they are the bad people. They are in league with the devil. And we're going to identify those problems. I'm also going to show the famous, if you've never seen this, you're going to be so happy, the famous 1993 Mother Angelica video where she goes off on the liberal American Catholic Church. And she goes into specifics about their lack of belief in the Eucharist and standing for the consecration and women's ordination. She really, she goes hard. And I think if you think, well, you know, there's there's Catholics, priests and lay people and bishops uh, in 2021 who have criticisms of corruption in the church, that's a new thing. No. When you see this 1993 video of Mother Angelica, um, you're going to be impressed. I think she was a very strong woman and uh, a strong religious and a witness in her time. God definitely anointed her. I, again, there's there's things about EWTN I don't like, whatever, but there has been some good work. I might actually share um, the role of EWTN in the conversion of my wife. Um if I have time, I'll talk about that. All right, we're going to pray now. We'll do the uh, we'll pray the Our Father together, and then uh, we will we'll go into this and show the video of Mother Angelica. Oremos nomini Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater noster, qui es in celi, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra. Sicut et nos dimittimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libera nos amalo. Amen. May the souls of the faithful depart through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Nomini Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, back to these quotes. Um, the gaslighting part. Actually, do y'all want to do the gaslighting part or should we do the Mother Angelica part? Let's do the Mother Angelica part. Um, it's, I watched it again. I've seen it before a few times. I watched it again this morning. It's, it's pretty long. It's, uh, 
28 minutes long. It's just to cue, uh, cue it up. It it begins with a very, it, I'm pretty sure it's Cardinal Dolan as a young priest. This is 1993. He can, He's talking about the Pope, uh, Pope John Paul II's visit to Denver in 1993. What happened is they had a Stations of the Cross and they had a woman play Jesus. Oh, this was like a mime. So mimes are so creepy. No offense to the mimes out there, but not a fan of that. So they decided to do some kind of Stations of the Cross with a mime. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was depicted by a woman. And Mother Angelica takes this opportunity. She, at the beginning, says, I encourage everyone to watch this Stations of the Cross. But it wasn't a Stations of the Cross. They had a woman play Jesus. How can this be? This is in your face that they're trying to deny women's ordination. And I'm just sick and tired of this liberal American nonsense in the church. Y'all don't have the faith. And she really gives it to him. So let's watch that. Let me get it on the screen here. Hopefully it all works up well for us. All right. Excellent. There she is, Mother Angelica, in her older habit. Um, before she went to the more traditional habit, here's her. Um, before she went to her reward, she was wearing, wait, let's see here. This habit, much more traditional and lovely, but th back in the day she was wearing this one. Okay, so here we go. Hopefully you can hear it okay. Took out our lady to the time they took out the, the tabernacle, to the time they took out stations, the time they took out all devotions, the time at this point they have changed our churches, they closed them. And now we're not even allowed in many, many areas to kneel when that awesome presence comes down into this one host. Some lounge, some sit, some stand. I'm tired of enneagrams. I'm tired of your witchcraft. I'm tired. I'm tired of being pushed in corners. I'm tired. I'd like to just pause here that not only does she know that there's liberalism in the church in 1993, she knows it has to do with witchcraft in the occult. Uh, and, and props to her. She's fully aware that the infiltration of religious orders in the church has to do not just with bad theology. We had some bad catechesis here, bad formation. No, witchcraft, evilness, occult, Satanism, all that magic. Here we go. Here she goes. Of your inclusive language that refuses to admit the Son of God is a man. I'm tired of your tricks. I'm tired of your deceit. I'm tired of you constantly just making a crack. And then the first thing you know, there's a hole, and all of us fall into it. No. This was deliberate. These were not a group of children decided to do this. This was a group that was told what to do and how to do it. You dare portray Jesus as a woman under the guise of mime in the place where the Holy Father is knowing what the church teaches, knowing what he thinks and how he feels, you have the gall to do such a thing. No, you made a statement that was not accidental. And this is just as much a lie as the lies we got last night. I am so tired of your liberal church in America. And everything you've ever done has bound in silence. Nothing, nothing you've done. From your witchcraft to your enneagrams to your centering prayer, to all this earth spirituality. There she is. She calls it out. The witchcraft, the uh, centering prayer, the uh, all, all this nonsense. She's calling it out. 1993. Replacing holy water with sand. To destroying our churches and closing churches that are viable and, and ready to go. No, this is not an accident. We've swallowed this now for 30 years. I'm tired of it. We have swallowed enough of your idea of God. You have really no God. You have no dogma, no doctrine, and no authority. Because the only authority in the Catholic Church is our Holy Father and the Magisterium. And you have disclaimed that. You don't believe in the Eucharist. You don't believe in the Immaculate Conception. You don't believe in the Virgin Birth. You don't believe in Mary's power of intercession. You don't believe in religious life. You don't believe in being a spouse of Christ. You do believe in teaching to the little children of the third grade sex education. You do believe in forcing centering prayer and forcing inclusive language upon us. And now she calls out 1993 forcing sex education on children. 
I mean, she's very prophetic here. 1993. And she says 30 years. Now we're over 50 years, folks. We're 20 years from this. You depict Jesus as a woman. You're sick. But I admit you have a right to your ways. Mm. You have a right to think your thoughts. You have a right before God and this nation to do what you do. I actually kind of disagree with Mother Angelica here, and this is, goes back to uh, Vatican II, Dignitatis Humanae. Error has no rights. No one has the right uh, to murder babies. No one has the right to blaspheme. No one has the right um, to um, sin against God. God doesn't give, he gives us freedom of will, but he doesn't give us the right. There's a distinction between freedoms and rights. And we don't have the right to do these things. We don't have that right before God. So just up, I mean, I think if mother were here right now, and we said that she would, of course, agree, but just that wording there. But I resent you trying to destroy the Catholicity of the simple and the poor and the elderly by your ways. I don't, I'm not going to accept that. I'm a Roman Catholic. I'm a Latin right. I believe in God as Father, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe that Jesus is His Son, His only Son. I believe that the Spirit proceeds from Father and Son, that there is a Trinity. I believe that baptism puts into my heart and soul that wondrous Trinity. It is not an initiation into a club. This is something we need to repeat over and over. People think baptism is initiation into a community club. It does enter you into the church, but more importantly, it remits original sin. And if you're an, old, an adult, mortal sin, venial sin, and gives you grace in your heart to be saved, to be justified is the language, uh, and regenerated. So again, this is why we don't delay baptism. This is why baptism is of the essence of Catholicism. I'm so glad you said that. I believe that he died and he suffered and he rose. He rose. It wasn't a, a rising of the resurrection of Jesus in the thoughts of men. It wasn't something that we are to remember. It was a physical resurrection. I believe in that. You don't. So in case you're just a good Catholic person who's never heard the crazy liberalism, and I'm going to come back to Mother in just a second, uh, liberals will tell you that Jesus, when he rose, what happens is he rose in our thoughts and he rose in our hearts. He didn't actually rise from a tomb. So you have to be careful. You might hear a liberal priest or a Protestant pastor say, well, yeah, I believe Jesus rose again. But they believe that he rose in our hearts, not that he rose from the dead. And Mother Angelica, of course, is aware of this heresy. She's calling it out. She's saying that's not what we believe as Catholics. We believe the body of Jesus that was dead, that was crucified, rose on the third day. Here she goes. How great is this, huh? Thumbs up for Mother Angelica children and our children don't even know the eucharist anymore they don't understand that that is the blessed sacrament that's the body and blood of soul and divinity of jesus your catechisms are so watered down they say nothing except love your neighbor no you've got to love god first love it love it she says this is 20 years ago the kids don't know about the blessed sacrament they don't know about the real presence they don't know about the eucharist 20 years ago. Your catechisms are full of love your navel. No, you got to love God first. You got to love God first. You got to live with God in your heart. You can't give what you don't possess. I don't like your church. You have nothing to offer. You do nothing but destroy. All that you've seen this week, my friends, is what the Catholic Church is really like. All those beautiful teenagers are what they all should be like. All of those, those ceremonies that you saw are so truly, wonderfully Catholic. But no, you want to destroy that. And so you plant this mind, a woman as Jesus. You dare do that. You can't stand Catholicity at this height. When I heard, heard her say that, you put that woman in as a mime. What would Mother Angelica think if she saw Pachamama, an idol of Mother Earth in the Vatican in front of the Pope. Mother and I mean, this would be like, you know, in Texas, we got mild hot sauce, medium hot sauce, and hot hot sauce. This is her on medium. I think if Mother Angelica 
saw Pachamama in the Vatican with the Pope, she would go from medium to hot on the hot sauce scale. I, I, I just, God bless her that she was not alive to see that. We saw that. We live in 20 years beyond this point of things degrading. Have you spoiled so many things in these 30 years? I speak for myself and my community. We're not going to take your inclusive language. We're not going to stand or lounge. We're going to kneel before that wondrous Eucharist. We're not going to go for all those crazy things that you're pushing out as new and cultural and American. They're not American. America was built on God. America was built on trust in God. And you've made it pagan. You've helped to make this nation pagan. Because you have no, no spirituality that, that attracts. 1993. She knows the enemies of Christ want to make the church pagan. She, Mother well, Angelica is so based based on Catholicism here. I just, it's amazing to me how insightful she was in 19, this is 1993 after the World Youth Day in Denver. All right, continuing. Your religious orders are going down. You don't have vocations and you don't even care. Your whole purpose is to destroy. The purpose of this wondrous day, this wondrous weekend is to build. This Holy Father is the Holy Father. His is to bring peace. His whole duty is to portray the truth. And as he portrays it, whether it's moral truth or faith, you destroy it before it even gets in the papers. You speak against it, you call him an old man. No, you're not builders, you're destroyers. I'm not going to take that anymore. I am proud to be a Roman Catholic. Wow. And she goes on for for more here. I'm not going to take that anymore. I'm not going to take that anymore. And you know, my own life as a Roman Catholic, I tried to, you know, say, well, when Pope Francis said that, what he really meant was this. And well, if you look in the Spanish and you choose the fourth definition in the Spanish dictionary, it's not heretical. And well, you know, I mean, you know, I know that the liturgy is comical and it's embarrassing and they drop hosts on the floor but you know the mass is still valid so what are we going to do no it's time that christ receives his rights his rights as the king of kings the nobility that he has as the eternal son of the father as our redeemer but also as our redeemer in the womb and our Blessed Mother, bringing her dignity to her, and his dignity in the Blessed Sacrament. So no, I'm not going to turn around anymore when hosts are dropped, or particles are lost, or chalices are spilled, or non-Catholics are brought to communion when they don't know what they're doing. And this whole thing started with Mother Angelica because a woman depicted Christ in the Stations of the Cross in 1993 at the Denver World Youth Day. Now, back to Pope Francis. And here's where we get back to the gaslighting because although Mother Angelica doesn't use the word gaslighting, she says, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of y'all putting us down, hiding the goodness that we are trying to do through Christ Jesus. You are bringing in your magic, your occult, your anagrams, your centering prayer, your sex ed for children. She names all of these things. And she says, y'all have nothing, nothing that attracts, she says. You see, heresy is sterile. It's dry. It doesn't have life. This is why in the history of the church, when heresy comes out of the church, it has popularity for a time, but then it begins to shrivel. It withers away. Now, Pope Francis says, there is, for example, a large Catholic television channel that has no hesitation in continually speaking ill of the Pope. I personally deserve attacks and insults because I'm a sinner, but the church does not deserve them. They are the work of the devil, 
end quote. So let's talk about gaslighting. Gaslighting comes from an old film. I can't name, remember the name of the film. Um, but it's a strategy that psychopaths use on normal people to overpower them, to fool them. Basically, what happens is, is they keep telling you that you are the crazy one. The problem is with you, not with them. Abusive people always do this to other people. Now, in these quotes, there are three examples of gaslighting. The first is that the Pope is the one being attacked and that the Pope is the church. Uh, we'll look at that in a little, little bit. The second is that whenever Pope Francis speaks of the devil, the devil refers to his critics or those who are opposed to him and his friends, right? So, you know, the devil is not in Germany promoting heresy or the blessings of unnatural unions. Um, the devil's not with Pachamama. Uh, the devil's not with McCarrick or with all these other things. The devil is with his critics. So you would think with this rhetoric that the demonic you know, the, the devils are circling with their pitchforks at EWTN. Not the German Conference of Bishops. Not the Vatican Bank. Not the Pachamama playground in the Vatican Gardens. No, it, the demons, the devils are the critics over at EWTN. And then the final one is uh, towards the end. I read it at the beginning. I'll read it again. He says... I sometimes lose patience, especially when they make judgments without entering into real dialogue. I can't do anything there. However, I go on without entering their world of ideas and fantasies. I don't want to enter it. And that's why I prefer to preach. Preach. So he says, look, I sometimes lose patience with these people when they make judgments. But he says, I can't do anything about it because they, um, it says they make judgments without entering into real dialogue. So he's saying, the problem with them, the problem is with them because the problem with them is that they don't enter into dialogue with me. When Cardinal Zen came to the Vatican to speak with the Pope, he was not given dialogue. When the Dubia Fathers, especially Cardinal Burke, sought out audiences to discuss the theological problems of the Dubia, they do not get dialogue. They do not get admitted into the papal circle. And yet he gaslights and says, well, they make these judgments, but they're not entering into dialogue, so there's nothing I can do about it. You'll notice when people really don't like you for whatever for whatever reason it could be jealousy, it could be a rivalry, it could be a misunderstanding in the past, they create scenarios that place the guilt and the blame on the other party, especially when they talk about it with other people and in public. You know, this sometimes happens with ex-spouses. They will talk about all these negative um, encounters. They modify sometimes, change, expand the stories in order to vilify the other person to gain sympathy for themselves. And that's the goal of the gaslighting is, you're placing the, the blame, the problem on the other person. And then you're calling for sympathy onto yourself. And that's what actually Pope Francis does three times in this meeting with the Jesuits in Slovakia, just as a way of review. Oh, I forgot. I didn't really go through the Pope as the church one. So um, he says, you know, there's this ca large Catholic channel that's continually speaking ill of the Pope. And he says, I personally adore deserve tax and insults because I'm a sinner. Now I would pause here and say that Francis doesn't believe that. He says he deserves a tax because he's a sinner, but he would, if you would have said, oh, okay, well, what about other sinners, um, sexual sinners? Do they deserve a tax and insults? No, uh, not even, conservative Catholics don't even believe that. So I, I, I kind of sense um, a sleight of hand here because I don't think he really believes that. But he says, but the church does not deserve them. They are the work of the devil. And there is the shift. He's condemning EWTN 
And I think he's probably referring here to Raymond Arroyo and the papal posse um, because they are constantly looking at things the Pope is doing, things the Pope is saying, and, and they are critical, just as I am critical as well. Hopefully respectful, hopefully respectful of the papacy, hopefully in charity and love for the man, Pope Francis Jorge Bergoglio, for his salvation and his well-being and his physical well-being, hopefully maintaining all that. I hope you've never heard me say anything that would be hateful, derogatory, or disrespectful to him as a person or especially for his offices uh, as Pope. Now, we have to be very careful, and I've tried to be very careful over the years on this, but I still occasionally slip. And that is, when I say, or you say, infiltration of the church, corruption in the church, etc., we need to be specific because what we really need to say is the corruption of the human hierarchy, uh, the corruption um, within the leadership of the church. You'll often hear me say, in the leadership of the church. Right? Because the church is the bride of Christ, and the church will be reformed, and it will be purified over time, or quickly, who knows? Christ loves her. If you read Ezekiel, you read Jeremiah, you read the Old Testament prophets, you realize that Israel was often led into idolatry and sexual immorality by her own leadership, the king and by the high priests, and the priests at the temple. And God would send prophets who would then rebuke the people, rebuke the leadership. And then if they didn't repent, there'd be all kinds of bad things like pandemics, plagues, economics, collapse, wars. God allows these things to bring the people back. If we don't repent as a church, as a people, as a nation, God will allow us to be tested to bring us back to him. So those are the three, three gaslighting things here. Attack on a pope is attack on the church. So the attackers are not attacking his mistakes as pope. For example, putting a Pachamama idol in a church in the Vatican by the tomb of St. Peter. When they're criticizing that, the gaslight maneuver is, well, you're criticizing the church. And that's the work of the devil. The second gaslight is, is whenever the devil is mentioned, it's the critics of him. So the devil is at EWTN. The devil is with the rigids. The devil is with the rad trads. But why is the devil never at a parade in San Francisco? Why is the devil never at the German Conference of Bishops? Why is... Um, I mean, we could name all kinds of things in the church. Vatican Bank scandal. Is the devil there? Why don't we ever hear about that? And then the dialogue one. Well, I mean, these people make judgments about me all the time, but I can't do anything about it because they don't dialogue with me. Really? You really think if the papal posse on EWTN, Raymond Arroyo, Father Murray, those guys called up and said, hey, we want to do a private dialogue with Pope Francis over some of these details. Do you think that would actually happen? No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. All right. Well, God bless Mother Angelica. I hope you enjoyed that video footage of Mother Angelica. I'm going to play. Can I play one more key part of it? I'm going to go back because I know some people are just joining us. I'm going to go back here to this really strong part. Here it is. Father Magister, and you have disclaimed that. Inception? You don't believe in the virgin birth? You don't believe in Mary's power of intercession? You don't believe in religious life? You don't believe in being a spouse of Christ? You do believe in teaching to little children of the third grade sex education? You do believe in forcing centering prayer and forcing inclusive language upon us? And now you depict Jesus as a woman. You're sick. Did I admit you have a right to your ways? You have a right yeah, that's to the part I talked about earlier. But I just love that part right there, Mother Angelica. Everyone say a, uh, a Hail Mary for Mother Angelica. Actually, why don't we do that now? We'll do our Hail Mary at the end of the show here. Before I close out, though, thanks, everybody, for watching. 
And uh, if you haven't yet, go ahead and hit that like button, thumbs up. I don't know, maybe you didn't like it. Maybe you're like, man, Mother Angelica, what's up with her? I don't like her. I'm going to give her a thumbs down. Two thumbs down from Mother Angelica. If you're that person, you be that person, but I don't like it. And then uh, share this. You know, maybe people need to be encouraged. A lot of people think, oh, we should just sit by and be quiet and not say a blessed thing. No, that's not what Mother Angelica did. Mother Angelica turned on the television and got fired up. My favorite part in that video is when she crosses her arms and leans back. Because then you know she's going to go for it. She really goes for it. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and uh, click the bell. If you click the bell, you get notified. All right. We are going to now pray the Hail Mary, and we're going to pray it for the repose of her soul. If she's already in heaven as a saint, uh, then that prayer will go for somewhere else. If she's not, hopefully all of us can push her out. That's how prayers for the dead work. Oremus in nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. For the repose of the soul, Mother Angelica. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et or mortis nostre. Amen. Fidelium animae, per misericordium Dei, requiesca in pace. Amen. Nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, another thing that Mother Angelica always said was pray the rosary. Pray the rosary every single day or you're not on the team. Get those beads out. Rattle the beads. Pray the beads every day. Dads, lead your wife and your kids in the rosary every day. We do it after dinner. It's good if you set a time. Eight o'clock, rosary time. And the kids can go brush their teeth, get their pajamas on after that and all that. That's how we do it. Pray the rosary every day or you're not on the team. What was Mother Angelica's weapon? A video camera? Yeah, in a way. But I guarantee you that clarity and that fire comes from her time with Jesus through Mary in the rosary. Pray the rosary every day or you're not on the team. All right, friends, remember, our Lord Jesus Christ says you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless. Godspeed. Talk to you tomorrow or the next day. Bye.